now. Welcome. This is the Jenkins Platform Special Interest Group. It's the 21st of December. Uh, thanks for being here. Topics I've got on my list, action items, Windows Docker images for LTSC 2019, uh, the master branch, and I'd like if we have time to review a draft of the JIP that I've created in a Google Doc, trying to trying to get some progress on that that Jenkins enhancement proposal. Are there any other topics that you'd like to uh, bring to the meeting? Oh, oh, actually, there's one that I want to bring. So our new arm. Arm images or new arm servers at uh, Amazon. So a topic from from me. Any any other topics? Okay, great. So I have the action item to open a JEP for Docker operating system support ongoing and uh, finally started the evolution of the document. I did a bunch of investigation, comparing, contrasting a few weeks ago. Uh, we'll review that later today. CentOS options for Adopt Open JDK. So Alex, you've opened a PR for this. Uh, thanks very much. Could you share with us what you learned from that PR? Uh, it was pretty easy. I mean, um... It's basically just um, adding in the adopt adoptium or adopt open JDK as it was previously called, obviously, um, repo, and um, the it seemed to install the JDK just fine uh, from adopt open JDK. I did have to, I think I did have to add um, so the free type and font config libraries. Um, are required because it's um, it's not a headless JDK. I don't think Adopt has a headless option. Um, so those were additional libraries that had to be included. You say free type and font config. Ah, okay. Otherwise, you get a um, AT, uh, AWT error when Jenkins starts up. Got it. Okay. Excellent. So, so that one now the that would give us instead of relying on the CentOS based JDK, we would then rely on adopts of the Adoptium JDK. Correct. Nice. Okay. And I saw here that it's using JFrog.io. So that's the official. That's their official um, Yum repository for Adopt Open JDK. Yeah, that's from their install page. Um, so you ah. go to their install page. Um, it basically says to do this exact operation. Obviously, it's not they're not saying doing it in a, in a Docker file, but um, I just adopt or uh, adopted the uh, um, procedure and put it into the Docker file. Excellent. I can link from their or link their install page to the, um, to the PR just so people. See That's great. Thank you. Okay, so that would that would shift us so that we would then be using Adopt Open JDK for Alpine, for Debian, and for CentOS. And Windows. Oh, and Windows. Right. Right. Exactly. This is the this is the one remaining platform not using Adopt Open JDK. Okay, good. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. So in terms of uh, communicating that change, is there anything we fundamentally need to communicate? And do we have a vehicle to, to communicate that? I, I mean, there's nothing that's displayed to users when they run a new Docker image, they just get the new image, right? Correct. So I'm not sure if there's, if there's something we need or can or want to do. Um, I'm not sure. I know it's that mainly for, it's mainly for running the controller. So I, part of me says that we're, we're just packaging our recommended JV or JDK with the controller image and it'll work, you know, 
regardless, but maybe we do need to let people know. I'm not sure. People are hopefully not doing builds on their controller, so. Right, okay. So now I, I saw that looking back in time earlier today, I saw that Oleg had used a, a place to tag when he rolled us to Alpine 3.12. Would we be willing to consider or should we consider tagging and using GitHub releases, even though they don't fundamentally publish anywhere? Um, just in general, you mean? Yeah, wondering in, in the general case, not as, you know, so, hey, we're going to drop Debian, Debian 9 support in the not too distant future. We're going to, and, and that will need some way of saying it, we could use a GitHub release and a tag, or we, we could do some other notification, blog post, whatever. Yeah, I think that sounds good. I mean, maybe it's, maybe we should um, do um, tweaks on the Jenkins release. I don't know if there's a, a manual way to do tweaks there. I know there's not, there's automated tweets, but um, yeah, does that make sense? Uh, so that one I didn't quite understand when you're, you're suggesting tweeting that that we had done the release. So there's the Jenkins release Twitter account. Ah, okay. Uh -huh. That has that does the tweets when they're like plug-in releases and stuff like that. I'm not sure how we would do it like an automated method of doing that, but I think we kind of do quote unquote releases infrequently. So it might be easy if we just did a manual tweet every now and then. But I don't know. But I think anything just letting people know. It's fine. Okay, I think I think I'm understanding what you're suggesting. Good. All right. Yeah. So that one, I'm not quite sure how to do it, but I think it's worth consideration. Certainly, we can consider a blog post for large, larger changes, like Debian nine to ten grade, etc. Okay. So that one feels like anything else you wanted to share on that? Uh, sorry, I, uh, the email came through. Uh, uh, any? Um, no, nothing else on the on the CentOS stuff. Okay. All right. And plugin installation manager and update center. I like, I like your suggestion from our last meeting that we would consider doing a shim replacement of install plugins.sh. Uh, you warned that there may be some, there are some behavioral differences. Are those um, a grave concern for you or just needs exploration as part of, of this proposal? I think it just needs some exploration. Basically that what we could do is uh, create the shim and then just run the normal test cases uh, that, that we have and see if they pass or not. Uh, right, I, I, okay. I, I can take a look at that um, probably this next week. Okay, great. Excellent. Okay, and then we had a topic there on refinements for parallelization and multi-arch CI. I assume this one is delayed while Jim is on other projects. Yeah, I think so. Or a month or more. Okay, great. All right. So next topic was Windows Docker images for LTSC 2019. Gareth, do you want to take us on a tour of current status? Yeah, so the server images are all there. Um, we're only building JDK 11. Um, and we still don't have an official release of Adopt Open JDK on that version, so but that, that's okay for the time being. Um, in terms of the agent images, there are two open PRs for um, that just need reviewing to add JDK 8 in, and that should be for the Docker agent, and I think it's the SSH agent. And then the other one is the Docker inbound agent. Um, and that requires some, well, the current pattern is to use the sort of the versioned agent release that 
it seems to be built off the tag, which we're not getting for the newer images. Um, and I'm not entirely certain of what the best way forward for that is. So we okay, could so just wait. Go, go ahead, sorry. I'll ask my question after you finish, excuse me. Yeah, so the build that is, the tag that was created that's been built on trusted.ci, um, which is 461 of the agent, that doesn't contain any of the LTSC 2019 images. So we, we, we're not getting the, the um, we're not getting the builds for those, or sorry, the Docker containers for those. I, I think what we need to do is do a release. Yeah. Uh, on the um, GitHub side, and then a tag will be created that we can actually, what is this, 4.6.1? Yeah, there is a tag already. Let me look at trusted real quick. I just have to in so I get a tunnel just a okay, so so and while while Alex is doing that investigation I need to be sure I capture this because I'm still still learning the structure so we've got a docker agent repository that is the base image and then we've got inbound and the docker SSH image that are both derived from that image is that correct Gareth or could yeah. you describe that a little further for me the SSH image is not oh it yeah. is not only the inbound I see. Okay. All right. So, so Docker agent, the Docker inbound agent, the Docker agent pull request Gareth submitted is for the base image. For the base image. But the issue you found is it does not yet include somehow it doesn't yet include the LTSC 2019 images you'd proposed. Then there's the Docker inbound agent image. So it's that pull request that's currently, that's failing at the moment because the base images that it's depending on don't exist yet. Okay, and this is this is one where we don't, okay. All right, good. Okay. Uh, for the 4.6-1 tag is building on trusted. I'm looking to see why it's not pushing those images. I was assuming it was because when the tag was created, those images don't didn't exist in that build. Well, I'm looking awesome. at the the Docker the the Docker agent one, so it should be pushing whatever it's building. Uh, except I thought that if a tag exists already, we didn't do a repush. We would only push a tag once. Uh, in the Docker the. The agent ones, we don't have the same. Oh, we don't. Uh, no, we don't have the same scripts or anything like that. It just always pushes. So yeah, right. when I was looking, when I was looking at the logs for those today, uh, I can't see any LTSC twenty nineteen images being built at all. Yeah, that's interesting. But I can from the master build. Um, uh, my guess is that, uh, yeah, so 4.6-1 was released on November 4th, which was way before these new images. So we probably just need to do another dash release uh, yeah. on GitHub, and then we can create a new, um, that will create a new tag, or create a new tag, and we can build that tag to get those images. Okay, and the way we do that is go into the GitHub repository for that and just apply a tag and, and declare well, it a release. Do a new release. Um, there's a draft one that you know that has um, has the commits like the um, the one from Gareth and some from uh, Victor uh, Martinez. Uh, so we can do a, we can easily do a release. I can do that. Oh, okay. All right. Great. So. And that's in the Docker dash agent repository. So we, pro we, we probably want to get the JDK eight versions in for those. Uh, before okay. we do the release. Okay, yeah. so 
so we've got there's this pull request here that's still pending before we ask for a release of this okay and alex are you okay with my answer on the why we're proposing jdk8 was yeah, that I okay for you that. oh you did oh good okay yeah, i great. just barely merged it so we're good excellent so I'll go, I'll do a release there and then make sure it builds on trust. Awesome. And so Alex, is, help me with the version naming. So this will be a 4.6-2? Correct. Okay. And do those versions, do those releases already include uh, descriptions in the, are we already using, oh yes, okay, great. So it's yeah, already it's using release drafter, okay. Excellent, okay. So Gareth, I, 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 what I think I'm then understanding is once we've got 4.6-2 tagged, trusted CI will detect the existence of that tag and will apply it and push those images. And that should include the LTSC 2019 images as well, or did I misunderstand? Yeah, I think that yeah, the four, we should get the Docker, Docker agent 4.6.2 versions up. Um, and I'll probably need to just rebase my PR on the inbound stuff because uh, yeah, with the right version. So that's cool. I'll, I'll watch those and yeah. I think I have three open PRs. One is sorted now. I don't know how to fix it. I just need to check that one. But that's cool. Great. I got a 404 while doing the release. Let me check if it actually went through. No, it didn't. Okay, please. I'll fix it. Nice, I did a submit and it said 404. Oh, ouch. I need to remember to always copy and paste my release drafter stuff somewhere else so it doesn't die. Oh, and we've got one other person who's interested in joining this session. My apologies, I had missed that. And that's awkward, shame on me. Just a minute, let me be sure that I get her the, the meeting invite. See participants, invite, copy invite link. All right, four point six dash two is released on the Docker agent repo. I'll, ver I'll once the tag shows up, I'll verify that um, that trusted sees it and we can build it. I don't think that tags are automatically built on trusted. So generally, just as an FYI, and, and if you ever do this, you have to go into trusted and verify that the, the tag gets built. Okay. I, I'm not sure what setup we need to change to fix that. But. Well, and I assume that's, that's likely because trusted doesn't receive any GitHub um, Notifications? Any? What do you call them? Webhooks? Yeah, it has to go do a. It has to go do a um, repository scan. Right. Okay. Yeah. Now that that I think is a separate topic, but there had been some discussion. Trusted is used to build the Docker images because of the credentials required. Um, is that one where we would be willing to consider possibly in the future moving it from trusted that's behind that SSH tunnel to infra that's on the VPN and not behind the tunnel? Or do you have a strong feeling that no, it really needs to stay in trusted? Um, I have no personal. Uh, okay, so you're, you're open to either. Yeah, it would probably, it would probably, go, it would probably go to release it, wouldn't it? Oh, oh, right, right. You're correct. Right. Release.ci would be the more sensible one because we use it when we re we deliver releases. Yes. Yeah. But it would make sense to still have it behind, probably behind the VPN or something. Yeah. Have it protected in, have it protected in some way. 
Yeah, so let me just make a note of that here in the in the notes that um, yeah, it's this one. Consider moving from trusted.ci to release.ci. Simplify Jenkins releases, uh, wider access, easier to diagnose. And no less secure, deliver a Docker image than a Jenkins release. Yeah. And I mean, there's, it, it's, it's, a Jenkins release is just as just as security sensitive as a Docker image releases. Is releases um, just releases.ca.jenkins.io? I think it's release.ci.jenkins.io, but you've got to be on the VPN in order to see it. Yeah, I'm on the VPN. Maybe I don't have access. Yeah, you. I that I don't know. I would think you should, but well, then again, um, Olivier intentionally limits who can who can access release.ci.jenkins.io to a, a relatively narrow group. If we were to move Docker builds there, we would need to grant you access to that. It sure, it certainly would make sense. Okay, so we've got. Anything else with regard to Windows Docker images? We've got the 4.6-2 release that is, is, has been released just now. And Alex, you'll watch it on Trusted CI, is that right? Yeah, I'll make sure it gets um, built. Okay, great, thank you. I think that covered that covers the Windows Docker images. Then, anything else, Gareth, on Windows Docker images? Nope, oh, that's everything. Okay, all right. Last month or last two weeks ago, I had asked about ci.jenkins.io master branch Docker image building. The job's been failing for a while. Alex, do you have any anything you wanted to share on that? Is that still a reasonable goal? Yeah, we definitely want to do that. We can disable the um, the experimental publish if we want. Um, I don't think that's a problem. Uh, I think I'll, I'll go ahead and make a PR for that, and then um, we can just do some work on uh, some PRs and stuff. I think all three of us have um, access that our Jenkins file changes might get pulled in, so I, I think it should be fine. Okay, great. So, so you don't object if the experimental, um, oh, oh, good. Thanks, Daniel. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Good point. So, so we can use pull requests to allow us to further adapt the, um, yeah, further adapt the build process. Okay, good. So Daniel, thank you for joining us. Anything else you wanted to comment on with regard to the the a future potential? No, this is we, we will certainly use a plan. We will certainly have that discussion in depth to be sure that we don't trample on the security security build process. Not really. Uh, I think I recently saw a message uh, around uh, release CI failing because it couldn't install plugins might have been in the infra IRC channel. Um, if that is the problem there, we need to be mindful uh, that we're not ending up in some sort of, um, what's the term, where one part cannot be repaired because another part is broken and vice versa. Uh, um, just stuff like that. But otherwise, um, just we, we need to be prepared how to handle outages of various sorts. Otherwise, I don't really have an opinion. Right now, what happens is before we publish security advisories, I make sure that all of the updated components can be downloaded, which means uh, packaging for 
um, regular uh, Jenkins wars, the plugin HPIs, if any are included, and as well as the Docker images. And notably, Docker images are required uh, because I update CI Jenkins IO before I announce the security fixes in an advisory. Um, and CI Jenkins IO needs to be online for the site build on trusted CI to work. So there's quite, there's even a dependency chain in the content uh, publishing process there. Um, and any changes here would need to be mindful of these dependencies. So if uh, Docker images cannot be delivered, I actually cannot really publish a security advisory. Got it. Um, okay. And my preferred solution would be if we had Docker image staging and just would need to copy them from the staging repository in Artifactory over to Docker Hub or wherever. Um, that would be ideal because then even broken builds are not on the critical path on release day. But um, yeah, uh, otherwise, uh, no no comments from me. Okay, so so that that concept, the concept of Docker image staging, I'm I'm ignorant sort of on that one. Um, is that one that you would would you be willing to have a further conversation with that either today or in in a later session? I'm I'm interested in that. It would mean, I assume, changes to our Docker build process, but we're already building the images ourselves, and I think we intend to keep doing that because we need control of the images. So so that that seems reasonable. Alex, any insights from you or, or Daniel? First question to you. Is that a topic we could discuss in more depth? I would be very happy to discuss this further, but as a quick note, uh, I've talked about it in bits and pieces with Olivier in the past. And so far, I think it's been mainly a lack of capacity um, that, that prevented this from happening. Um, but the staging that we're doing in the regular core build process uh, works uh, pretty well. Uh, we've always done staging, or at least for many years there, we were staging plugins. And right now the problem is on release day when I want things to go out quickly so that I can quickly uh, release the security advisory, the need to build the Docker images immediately then still adds some degree of uncertainty and fragility to the process that uh, isn't really inherently necessary. So yeah, I would be very happy to talk to you about it. Unfortunately, I'm not that well versed with Docker repositories, images and such, so I don't know how much I can contribute in the implementation there. Uh, so I think what I would like to do then is I'll schedule a session for, for deeper discussion because it feels like we need Alex, Olivier, Gareth, Daniel, anyone else that needs to be involved in that discussion? Uh, not from security side, no. Okay, great. Alex, insights from you. Is that, are you okay if we have that discussion and it feels like another thing along the line of the, the Docker image build improvements that we've been envisioning with Jim Crowley. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Oh, Jim, yeah, that makes sense. The release officer cert certainly should be involved. Okay, good. All right. Thank you, Daniel. Thanks for that quick trip back. So then, CI, the ci.jenkins.io master branch. <clears throat> Alex, Can anything further there? Oh, go ahead, yes. So I did uh, reach out, so this is somewhat related. It's Docker security stuff. I reached out to the Docker library folks about the Jenkins repository, the quote unquote official Jenkins, not our repository. And they removed the latest um, and some other tags so Daniel, if you could take a look and see if there um, are other specific tags that you would want re removed. I asked them about removing the, re the repository completely and they said that that's generally caused issues in the past. Um, so they, they were very hesitant to do that. Um, but <clears throat> they were willing to remove 
tags. So I don't know if the old old versions on there are fine to keep or if we want to just whack everything if possible. I'm not sure if um, removing all tags is possible or not. But uh, I, um, to clarify, good. if the latest tag doesn't exist, then I need to explicitly specify a version when I pull, correct? That is correct. All right, so, I, I think that's enough of a speed bump. So uh, to, I mean, Docker pull Jenkins on the top right, there is the copyable command uh, that would break them, correct? I, I believe so, I believe it will. Yeah, I think, I think that's enough of a speed bump to make people look at the page and it has the giant all caps deprecation notice. I think that um, should be good enough uh, to make them think twice about using the images there. Thank you very much for doing this. Yeah, well, thank you. Well, and, and looking at the their latest is 2.60.3, so it's only, what, four years out of date now? Yeah, the last time this repository was updated was two years ago. So they were, and I just tried to do a Docker pull Jenkins and it did say manifest for Jenkins latest not found. So it, it definitely will cause an error if they copy that command and try and run it. Yeah. So one thing that might be useful, um, and I mean, that may go too far into the weeds here, um, uh, is to explain as part of the deprecation notice that this hasn't been updated in several years by now. Because the way it is phrased, unless you know what Jenkins versions mean, uh, this could have been deprecated yesterday. Right. Well, and and if if we're asking them to make an edit, we could ask them to delete the reference to the latest tag because it no longer exists, and we like that. Yeah. I yeah, I'll think try and... repo that we can just file a pull request to. Is that correct? Well, Wasn't directory on GitHub? Uh, yes, but there is no Jenkins directory anymore. So I, I don't. That's Ooh. that's why it's not been updated in two years. So I need to go back and look at the history to see um, why uh, or when that Jenkins directory was removed that had releases. Okay, and so. They just have a bunch of um, directories and each directory is basically a, an official image. So I'm not, I, I need to look at the history and determine when that Jenkins directory was removed. Yeah, but not having the latest tag basically means people won't be able to to just use it like they use absolutely everything else. So, right, that's, it, that's already that provides a safeguard against blind consumption. Right about about silent blind consumption is like no, it, that doesn't work anymore. It just won't work for you. Great. Anything else on that topic, Alex? Oh, sorry to kind of hijack that a little bit, but. Oh no, that was great. What a, what a great piece of news. Thank you. All right, so we've got the agreement that we're gonna work on getting ci.jenkins.io master branch working. Uh, anything else on that topic? Okay, so the next topic, and this is a precious I propose we will stop at in, in nine minutes. So we, let's use the next nine minutes for, for this specific item. Um, I've got a draft proposal for, I'd like to change how we manage Docker images process wise. And this is my draft proposal. I wanted to bring, it's particularly valuable, Alex with you and with Daniel here to see, hear your inputs, get your comments. Oh, this is crazy. This won't work, et cetera. So the idea I had was let's attempt to, to use, have our Docker images be treated closer to the way we treat plugins in terms of their management processes. One of the concepts is the notion of adopt an image. So we have adopt this plugin. I think we ought to use GitHub code owners to assign owners to specific images in the Docker image repositories so that we know who is caring for a particular image. Thus, 
for instance, for my needs, I would ask to be one of the owners of the Debian repository and the Alpine, but I would not ask to be an owner of the CentOS repository, the CentOS files, because I'm not maintaining them. Um, but to oh, go ahead. So if a, an image does not have a code owner, um, would it be then an unofficial image? I was thinking it would just be up for adoption. I wouldn't demote it to unofficial. I would just make it up for adoption, but I'm open to open to arguments either direction there. I was I didn't want to, with this proposal, change the status of the existing images dramatically, but I'm I'm open to th that suggestion. It's I thought up for adoption was was a safe enough concept that it would allow people to continue using the images that are there, but knowing that, hey, this does not have an active maintainer on it. Okay. So, so Daniel, any insights from you there? Does the concept of up for adoption seem like it could be applied to this? Any things you've, you've learned from the security perspective that we should be mindful of? When I look at plugins, um, it's fairly easy to tell whether they are maintained or not because they are independently released. Um, and if there hasn't been a release in one, two, three, four, five years, um, the chances increase substantially that nobody's home. Um, but uh, that does not apply to Docker image variants, um, unless there is something incredibly obviously broken with them. Because it is, uh, to an extent, a reasonable decision not to track upstream very closely or automatically. Um, and so how do you distinguish, well, the base image hasn't changed in a few months, from um, nobody's maintaining this anymore. Um, and people do not announce when they leave. At least the vast majority don't. Um, some uh, well-known contributors in the community like Nicola, uh, Grigory, uh, Boissino, or more recently, um, who am I forgetting? Not Chris. Chris is still around, but Swiss guy. Ah. Sorry, don't remember the name. Um, they announced they were leaving and were looking for new maintainers for their stuff. Uh, I would not expect something similar uh, to happen um, uh, with, with these images. So they would have a declared maintainer, but um, maybe move on, lose interest, and nobody can tell. So yeah, uh, Dominic uh, Bartoli, I think I'm thinking of, uh, who recently announced uh, he no longer right. has time. Yeah, and I'm not sure how to, I, I agree, I think that's a valid point. Plugins, it's obvious because there is an explicit release and the absence of releases hints not not act an, an inactive maintainer any suggestions on things that we might use here where we've got what what basically is a mono repo for all the docker images intentionally so uh but we we would you consider could we consider separate releases for individual subsections i, I i'm not sure how to hmm. I, I don't know. Uh, I'm just, you know, thinking about what I've observed trying to reach out to maintainers after four years of nothing. And some were like, yeah, sure, I will help you, but I have no idea how to release anything anymore. Um, and some, well, email spawned. And there, there's the full spectrum uh, uh, there. And if I, it's, it's also, if you use a plugin, you have a relatively easy time to tell in Jenkins that you're using it. That is less the case with um, Docker images 
or packages. You've set it up years ago and since then, I don't know. I'm lucky enough that I have don't have to care about it because Olivier handles that. But um, I think there's also this um, situation where someone sets something up far in the past and nobody knows how it works. And I think with more the system level configuration, um, I think as a user, the expectation for me would be that there is a fairly clear distinction between what's supported and official and what is not. Obviously, in the Jenkins project, that distinction may not make a lot of sense. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm just not sure. I'm, I'm sorry, I can't offer solutions, only problems. Actually, I think you, you lobbied towards one, maybe back to the idea that Alex had offered, that maybe we should, as part of this proposal, it's a significant enough proposal, maybe we should declare if, if, at, if when we implement this proposal, a Docker image does not have a specific code owner, maybe we do mark it as, not mark it, we actually demote it, back from the Jenkins org to the Jenkins for eval org. That would break people, but it would make it very clear that this thing is not a maintained image. Um, but that, that's pretty dramatic, right? That will break people's Docker builds. Uh, did I, Alex, did I understand your proposal, your suggestion correctly or your question correctly? Yeah. Um, so the idea, the idea would be we, we have a set of specific images that are official images. Those are the ones that Daniel would have to care about when doing a security release. So we'd want to keep it fairly small. Um, and then we have other ones that are unofficial that are, you know, whatever anyone wants to put in there, right? I don't know if that meets security requirements because if people are relying on, on them as quote unquote official anyway, then it's still a problem. But that was kind of my thought was to reduce the number of images that Daniel had to care about for, for out of security releases. Right. As, as long as we tell people up front uh, what is properly integrated into our release process and what is not, what uh, we care about and what we don't, then I think um, that's that gives users uh, or that gives gives admins the necessary information to judge for themselves whether they really want to operate Jenkins out of I don't know their some weird uh, distribution like CentOS six or whatever um, when there may not be any security updates afterwards. That, that makes sense. Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right. So, thanks very much. The already the insights of I had I had not considered the security implications of this JEP. So, Daniel, thanks very much for your insights here. I will certainly copy you on the link to this and and get further involvement. This is very much in a draft state right now. I intend to keep working it trying to look at various compromises and alternatives that are hiding the impact of proposals that are happening in each of these. So the, the up for adoption proposal versus the become, become an unofficial image. And I think the place I'm supposed to put that is in the motivation section, or there's another section that describes about alternatives and why they were not selected. So I'll continue working that through the JEP process. So one potential problem here or something to be aware of is um, while this problem exists elsewhere in the Jenkins project in terms of plugin support in a way, um, it is less noticeable due to um, the support CloudBees offers um, to its customers and the benefits that users of the open source plugins have just because CloudBees supports them for customers. So security fixes are made available to anyone the same way 
uh, they are made available to CloudBees customers. So, and all of the popular plugins are uh, supported by CloudBees, which means um, in Jenkins for Jenkins Core and a lot of the most popular plugins, they are effectively security supported by CloudBees. Um, and only the less popular plugins typically um, are supported however their maintainers wish to support them, which is a very wide range. Um, and um, for the Docker images, uh, since uh, CloudBees products are uh, packaged independently, uh, it is purely community support in a way. So we try to get stuff fixed there, um, but there is not really this corporate entity um, that uh, directly supports it. And so this is sort of this weird uh, situation here and also why it, this problem feels like it should have come up in the past, but in a way it didn't. So this is really a new problem where we would need to figure out what does it mean for something to su be supported or not, or to be in scope of the security team or not. Right. Well, and, and I think your example of CloudBees probably also applies to Red Hat, right? In their open shift distribution, don't they deliver a Jenkins component, which is probably Docker image based? So it's it's even not, it, it's the same, same class of challenge there where we've got the community is, doesn't have at its, at its foundation or at its base also that CloudBees is doing it commercially or Red Hat is doing it commercially and using these exact images. Right, their CloudBees uses a different image, and I suspect Red Hat creates their own image as well. I don't know how Red Hat does it. Um, so previously, uh, Oliver Gonja, as a release officer, was a member of the security team and had the necessary access. Uh, I don't know whether he was working with OpenShift folks, but um, they have never directly engage with us. And right now we have nobody from Red Hat on the security team. Um, so they are probably just uh, downstream consumers of what we deliver. Um, but if they consume basically the war and the plugins, then they benefit from the security fixes we deliver there. And if they do their own images and, and tooling around it, they are independent of what we deliver in terms of Docker images. Right, okay. Thank you, okay, good insight. Anything else on this topic before we conclude our session today? Oh, oh I've got one more topic, sorry, before we end. Next meeting. Next meeting would be scheduled for uh, what day? It would be scheduled for January first. Oh, that's a bad day. We will cancel. Next meeting canceled. I am not going to rouse myself out on a on a bank holiday to do this meeting. Uh, anyone object to that? I think we should just do it earlier at like, you know, 12.30 a.m. Every, in everybody's and time. A little longer. Why didn't I think of that as the, uh, we will just have everyone join for their new, no, thank you. <laughs> okay. All right, so we will meet again on January 15. Is that, that workable for everyone? Works for me. All right, any other topics before we conclude? Did, did you want to discuss the ARM servers on? Uh, oh, oh, yeah, actually, okay. One minute highlight. Uh, Amazon has rolled out an, uh, their their next, It's they call it Graviton 2, I think. Servers are now available. Uh, and they've got a promotional period going on where they're giving a deal on lower cost if you use one of those new ARM64 servers that they've created um, for lower cost. I've been running one now for 
in a, a spot instance for a week or so attached to my CI server works great. So, so just be aware that um, a newer ARM servers are coming online and we may, for instance, Gareth, you and I had talked possibly about uh, LTS release candidate ex test execution and these Graviton ser servers might actually be quite interesting as a way to run LTS release candidate tests instead of running them on Intel. They are apparently about 40% cheaper price performance wise. So just, just for consider for the future, not, not anything we need to take action on immediately. Just be aware that Amazon has rolled out even better ARM based servers now. Cool. I'll have to go look at those. Yeah. I was really impressed and they, uh, they offer, offer a, uh, a discount right now for using them. It's like, well, gee, they're, they're it makes them really low cost. All right. Anything else? Okay, thanks everybody. Happy thanks. holidays and a happy new year. You too.